out. Guess y'all done seen it. There's a black mermaid now. Everybody's getting real big mad about it, but I'm gonna tell you what, I'm a good old boy. I do lots of fishing, and there's a lot of black fish out there. Check it out, there's a black fish, there's another black fish, there's a black mermaid from a Little Mermaid cartoon 30 years ago. Personally, I think Disney made the right choice. I don't know if y'all ever seen a Caucasian fish up close, but look at that damn thing, it's nasty. Yes, you heard that right. The Little Mermaid is now black. The once beautiful deep redhead, pristine white skin, 16 year old fish that defiled her father's rules went to the human world and almost got everyone murdered by an obese octopus for or some random man on a boat is now black. And people are pissed. In today's society, we no longer voice our opinion to family and friends over dinner. We now can voice them to the world on the wonderful World Wide Web. And many are making it known that they do not approve of this character change of a Disney classic. Disney just released the new Little Mermaid trailer, which has racked up to over 2 million dislikes. People are fixing the Little Mermaid to be right? Yeah, that didn't go too well. People were very mad at that artist. There's pages popping up called Christians Against the Little Mermaid. Such a specific group. You can't just be against the Little Mermaid. You must be Christian and against the Little Mermaid. Y'all are almost in double digits there, so... Congrats, I guess. I do think the group was already created and someone changed the name of an already existing group because when I checked, they had not that many, like it was like nine followers or something, but then it blew the fuck up because the story's trending and everyone's complaining about a kid's movie and they got 6,000 followers within a few weeks. And apparently a great place for Christians against the Little Mermaid to gather and talk amongst themselves. But you get the idea. So I wanted to take the time and really just dig into this topic because as you can guess, people are saying racist. If you have any critique when it comes to the upcoming movie and then on the other side, they scream, whoa, libtards. If you like the movie, you're excited. <laughs> So now you're some woke liberal. Disappointing. That was the message I got on Instagram when I said this makes little girl Michelle super happy. I censored the name out because it looks like a troll account with no pictures, but I thought it was very funny that I was instantly a liberal and woke because little girl Michelle would be excited for a movie. And if you know anything about me, you would know that uh, woke people don't necessarily like me and I am also not a liberal. I think it's personally way too easy to scream racism to anyone who has critique over the movie. And I think it's way too easy and low effort to scream woke if you don't like something. I've seen some great critical thinking points from both sides. So today we are breaking down most of the reoccurring criticisms I see as I scroll through the internet of people fighting over a movie made for kids about a human fish. I want to gather up my thoughts, hear both sides, and then tell you my opinion rather than screaming racist or Disney is pandering. That's just too easy and we don't do easy. So let's get to chapter one. So I do find it very odd as I surf through the web and read the comments and people word it as your character or our character based on skin color. I've seen both black and white people do this. Like it's only my character as long as they are black. All three of them. Just kidding. It's more now, but when I was a kid there was was there any black cartoons back then? <laughs> but that's not the point. I see many, many of people bringing up the fact that we don't swap colors. That doesn't happen. We keep things historically accurate. 100 times a white actor played someone who wasn't white. So that was easy. <laughs> but keep in mind, this is coming from someone who doesn't watch real life movies. I am a cartoon connoisseur, so I don't know what they are swapping and changing, but I flew down a deep rabbit hole. Angelina Jolie played Marianne Pearl, the real life wife of journalist Daniel Pearl, who was executed by the Taliban. Pearl is Afro-Cuban and Dutch heritage, while Jolie is descended from a line of white Europeans. They also plopped on a corkscrew wig on her head to really get the look down. My man Johnny Depp plays some dude named Tont Tonto, Tonto, I'm probably saying it right, uh, wrong I mean. When people critiqued him, he said, ah, I probably have some Native American. This is my Johnny Depp. 
impersonation. I know it's bad. I'm not an actress, so it doesn't matter. Ah, I probably have some Native American somewhere down the line. <laughs> so he's probably right though. Honestly, we all probably have some kind of Native American in us. Catherine, who's Welsh, sparked quite a bit of criticism for her portrayal of real life Colombian drug lord, Griselda Blanco, in 2017's Cocaine Grandmother. John Wayne, he's known for the all-American real man cowboy and quite frankly, a known racist. USC removed his exhibit after certain comments resurfaced. I believe in white supremacy until the blocks are educated. I personally love, have you guys noticed this? <laughs> love it when people say the black or I hear a lot of the gays or the insert race or whatever right here. It's just such a weird way of ex saying it. The blacks. I believe in white supremacy until the blacks are educated to a point of responsibility. I don't believe in giving authority and position of leadership and judgment to irresponsible people. Dude played Genghis Khan. Okay, that's funny. And I know that one's old, but the other ones were from the 2000, 2017 even. That's still pretty relevant. So it does happen, but I thought I would mention it because I was discussing with a few people and the topic came up and someone said, they would never swap a white person with a person of color. And I was like, hold up, what years are we talking? Well, you know, like recent years. And I'm like, what years are we talking specifically? And the person goes, um, like, you know, recent, like 2000s to now. That would never happen. Well, let me rock your world, baby. Honestly, my world was rocked. I know it happened. Probably happens in other countries as well. I'm guessing, does it? I don't know, but I just don't watch these shows, so I wasn't you know, familiar with like the Angelina Jolie thing and all of that. Anyway, the point is sometimes white people take our characters and other times we take your characters, if that's how you want to phrase it. And I guess Ariel is now ours until she's white again. I'm not exactly sure how all of that works. So that brings me to the, well, I guess we should just swap out Black Panther's black character for a white guy. Alrighty then. I saw that a lot. There's a lot of, well, let's make the Black Panther white. See how you guys like it. Someone drew the Black Panther. It's a well done drawing. I must say. Seven white actors that would have played a better Black Panther. Written by Jerry Trainer, Best known for his African American sitcoms like iCarly. It's obviously a joke from Reddit, but someone took it very seriously and said, source? Jerry Trainer. <laughs> Anyway, the post is very old, but I saw the pic getting shared all over Facebook, all over Instagram, because once again, it's trending again, and so people are sharing this whole thing. And when I saw these arguments, I was like, oh, these are interesting counter arguments from the other side. And I saw them say the same thing with, you know, the whole Princess and the Frog thing. And then I was thinking, wasn't the Black Panther, like, didn't they bring up race? Like, race was kind of part of the story. He is a proud African king of Wakanda. Well, Michelle, there's proud white Africans. Okay, you know what? You're right. I'm just here to tell you what's going on on the internet of what I've been observing everyone's opinion and the way they see it. Okay, the whole common ground thing, the whole listening to others thing, that's what I'm doing and just reporting it to you. I just find comparing it to the Black Panther odd, but if someone wants to swap in Ryan Reynolds for a black guy, be my guest. It would just be very funny. Like the white guys who dress up like Indians. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Very weird, but do what you want. I just think it would be very odd in the sense that part of the story brings up African culture, black African culture. Same with Princess and the Frog. It's about a poor black family, specifically the black woman, Tiana, trying to be a businesswoman, trying to start her own restaurant and the two white men playing their little games, even though she works very hard to save up all the money to buy the space that she needs to be successful, but they won't let her solely on the color of her skin. Which is why a little woman of your background would have had her hands full trying to run a big business like that. Now hold on there. You come, come back. Ah! Something that happened a lot back in that time period. And Ariel didn't. It was about a fish. So let's look into that a little bit more because people were expressing, but it is about whiteness. It's a Danish fairy tale, which means everyone should be white. Check it out. Go look at the original story. So, let's do that. It's 
story time. Pretend that this is a original classic Dutch version of The Little Mermaid and not Goosebumps. The Little Mermaid lives in an underwater kingdom with her widowed father, Mer King, her dowager grandmother, and her five older sisters. Wait, grandmother? I don't remember that in the Disney version of The Little Mermaid. We must stick to the original. The original storyline. It's very important to me. When a mermaid turns 15, she is permitted to swim to the surface of the first time to catch a glimpse of the world above. And when the sisters become old enough, each of them visit the upper world one at a time every 365 days. As each returns, the little mermaid listens longingly to their various descriptions of the world inhabited by human beings. Another thing, uh, she wasn't even referred to as Ariel in the original novel or story. She literally didn't have a name. She only was referred to as the little mermaid. They didn't even name the bitch. All right, back to the story. I just thought I'd say that because I didn't know she didn't have a name. She was just the Little Mermaid. When the Little Mermaid's turn comes, she rises up to the surface, watches a birthday celebration being held on a ship in honor of a handsome prince, and falls in love with him from a safe distance. Just by a look. That, that ain't love. It's lust, Little Mermaid, not Ariel. Then a violent storm hits, sinking the ship, and the Little Mermaid saves the prince from drowning. She delivers him unconscious to the shore near a temple. Here, the Little Mermaid waits until a young woman from the temple and her ladies in waiting find him. To her dismay, the prince never sees the Little Mermaid or even realizes that it was she who had originally saved his life. The Little Mermaid, longing for the prince and an eternal soul, visits the sea witch who lives in a dangerous part of the ocean. The witch willingly helps her by selling her a potion that gives her legs in exchange for her beautiful voice. As the Little Mermaid has the most enchanting voice in the world, the witch warns the Little Mermaid that once she becomes a human, she will never be able to return to the sea. Consuming the potion will make her feel as if a sword is being passed through her body. That definitely wasn't in the original. That sounds like she's giving the Little Mermaid her period and she's gonna have cramps all the time. At least that's how my cramps felt. Yet, when she recovers, she will have two humanlings and will be able to dance like no human has ever danced before. However, she will constantly feel as if she's walking on sharp knives. In addition, she will obtain a soul only if she wins the love of the prince and marries him, for then a part of his soul will flow into her. Otherwise, there will be consequences. After she agrees to the arrangement, the Little Mermaid swims up to the surface near the prince's castle and drinks the potion. The liquid feels like a sword piercing her body and she passes out on the shore. Naked. This ain't no kids movie. She is found by the prince who is, wait, was she naked? I think she was. <laughs> She is found by the prince who is mesmerized by her beauty and grace, even though she is mute. Most of all, he likes to see her dance. <laughs> and she dances for him, <laughs> despite the little lap dance right there off the get-go. And she dances for him despite suffering excruciating pain with every step. Soon, the little mermaid becomes the prince's favorite companion and accompanies him on many of his outings, but he does not fall in love with her at all. When the prince's parents encourages their son to marry the neighboring princess in an arranged marriage, the prince tells the little mermaid he will not because he does not love the princess. He goes on to say he can only love the young woman from the temple who he believes rescued him. It turns out the princess from the neighboring kingdom was the temple woman as she was sent to the temple for her education. The prince declares his love for Damn. The prince declares his love for her and the royal wedding is announced at once. The prince and princess celebrate their new marriage aboard a wedding ship and the little mermaid's heart breaks. She thinks of all that she has sacrificed and of all the pain she had endured just for the prince. Yeah, I'd be a little bit pissed, but you can't make people fall in love with you, you know? She despairs thinking of the death that awaits her, but before dawn, her sisters raise out of the water and bring her a dagger that the sea witch has given them in exchange for their long, beautiful hair. If the little mermaid kills the prince and lets his blood drip onto her feet, she will become a mermaid once more. All her suffering will end and she will live out her full life in the ocean with her family. However, the little mermaid cannot bring herself to kill the sleeping prince lying with his new wife and she throws the dagger and herself off the ship into the water. Just as dawn breaks, her body dissolves into foam. So, quite different from the remake uh, that Disney did. So I never knew the original story because I, 
I honestly didn't care. But it's interesting. And throughout the whole summary, I didn't see anything about skin color. They just said they live in an underwater kingdom. They didn't say an all white underwater kingdom. They didn't say an all black underwater kingdom uh, or all inclusive underwater kingdom. They said an underwater kingdom. And Danish people can be black, just like Africans can be white. And bitch didn't even have a name. So people saying the original story this and the original story that, Disney changed pretty much everything. And they changed some things again for the new version. The old version from what I saw and the Disney version also didn't bring up skin color. I actually just rewatched it and they didn't even bring up hair color. Uh oh, oh no which was another huge critique that I saw in the comment section, which brings us people to chapter three. I'm not upset that she's black, but I just wish they made her hair more red. The red hair was iconic and made little girls like me who have red hair be seen. She helped all ginger girls feel beautiful about our natural hair. It truly is a shame that they decided to dilute the hair and take away from the true Ariel. So I saw quite a bit of comments expressing like deep sadness because the hair is not realistic to the cartoon and that now gingers have you know no representation and i'm just trying to figure out what ginger sprouts out fiery ass catch up red hair naturally i'm going to put my opinion here just because this chapter is very very short but i was surprised they didn't make the hair you know the catchy type red hair either but i am feeling the more natural look i did see someone edit Haley's hair with like the deep red natural or not natural the deep red ariel hair and it's nice but i like to look at it as a different version of the little mermaid which it is. And I just rewatched The Little Mermaid. They didn't mention her red hair. Her hair was just red. That's just how the way they made it. So even though it was a key part when I think of The Little Mermaid, it's nice to see a change. And as a cosplayer, a black, cosplayer. I don't always make the hair exactly like the original. My personal goal when recreating, recreating characters is to make it fit me and make it look natural on me. And some of the colors and wigs just, you know, from characters and hairstyles just don't fit me. They don't fit my face or my skin color. So I, uh oh, I change it. And a lot of the critique Haley is getting is the same critique I get as a cosplayer when I portray a classic beloved character. And then here comes Mr. or Miss Critical who has this weird deep connection with a fictional character. Um, the shade of red you picked is not like the original character, try next time. Do the character justice if you're going to dress up like them. And that's the thing about fictional characters or just movies and dressing up in general. You can use your imagination and change the character to whatever you want it to be. Fat, a man, uh, and black with copper toned hair. I personally absolutely love seeing different versions of characters. I think it's very, very cool to see. And it's been over 30 years since the Little Mermaid hit the big screen, you guys. There's gonna be some changes, whether your butt cheeks like it or not, adults, because that's pretty much who I see complaining about this. Once again, it is a kid movie. Y'all can go watch adult shows if you don't like it. Many people are saying that Disney is now pandering to the woke crowd because they have, you know, the gay agendas going on. They're just gaying up everything, gaying up the place. And gay is not family friendly. I don't know how to break it to some of you, but there are very a many gay families. And I don't want to cause any heart attacks to anybody watching my channel. I try to make this a very fun place. I don't want anyone dying, but there's also gay Christian families. Just so you know, they are out there. There's quite a bit. And now Disney's making their white characters black fucking woke libtards. It's pretty much what I'm seeing. And they could totally be pandering to the woke crowd. Yes, they could be, but not everything is pandering, in my opinion, to the woke crowd just because you don't like it. And I see that a lot on the internet. They don't like something, pandering to the woke crowd. 
you don't agree. Pandering to the woke crowd. Just like that comment that I showed you that told me that I turned woke or whatever the fuck they said. Like I can't just be genuinely excited for a movie from my childhood with a lead black role. The little girl in me would be very happy. That's not being woke. That's just genuine excitement. I get the same comment though when I post about enjoying a burger on Independence Day. That's not our day, Michelle. Stop pandering to the conservatives. Like maybe I just like to enjoy things that I like to enjoy. If anything, I'm pandering to myself. We all are. In my opinion, just because Disney is being more diverse doesn't mean they are pandering. Wait. Once upon a pair of sneakers, there lived a boy who was full of creativity. Oh my God. That sneakers are a window to the soul. Disney, what the fuck is the sneakerella shit? Okay, when I saw the preview to that movie, I was like, y'all are... What the, what the fuck are y'all doing? You're just doing anything that because it's popular? Is that what? Yes, that's exactly why. They're pandering to exactly what is popular at the moment. Black, people of color, diversity, trying to include an array of different types of people. Disney is a business just like any other company who is going to drop in on the trends right now. Black is trending. So I don't necessarily agree or don't agree that they are pandering. I don't agree that they are doing it from the kindness of their hearts and they want to do it for the good of the children, especially all the little black girls and boys. At the end of the day, they want to make money, but can I be excited that there is a lead black character that is a princess? You're damn right I can. But I definitely agree that it is very lazy. I would be completely lying if I told you that I saw the trailer and I said, oh my gosh, yay. And the second part wasn't me saying, so they're just gonna regurgitate an old movie, change the storyline a little bit, throw in a black character, so us black people can be like, oh my God, thank you, Disney. Let me lick your ball sacks to your butthole. Twice. Thank you so much. You gave us Tiana, the princess that was a frog girl for a one hour and 20 minutes out of your one hour and 30 minute movie. And now we have a regurgitated Ariel. Thank you. Basically what I'm saying is that it is lazy. I agree, but I can still be happy about it. Cause she black y'all. Ariel's black y'all. She blackity 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 blackity. She black. <laughs> Another thing that I'm seeing people say is that she solely got the role just because she's black. Just because Disney is woke. So they just, psh, just give it to that black chick. Like it was so easy. You know, they saw her skin color and said, you, right there, you get the role. That is something that I was like, wow, what a slap in the face to Haley and all her accomplishments and her talent. And she's an extremely talented woman. I could understand more if she had absolutely zero talent but she's quite motivational. Her and her sister started on YouTube with just singing covers. They got discovered not just because they were black people saying that, but because they uh, could sing, okay? Pretty girls. Haley rose to the top with her beautiful voice and Rob Marshall, the director to The Little Mermaid, noticed her at the 2019 Grammys when Chloe, her sister, and Haley performed Where Is The Love? The director ended up just asking her to audition. He didn't just give her the part like that. She had to audition, she had to go work for it, and she sang Part Of Your World, and I quote, from the director, when she finished, I had tears because she was so soulful. You could tell right away that she was able to harness Ariel's passion, her fire, her soul, her joy, and her heart. I don't know about y'all, but if I was holding an audition and someone brought me to literal Kim Kardashian tears, I would probably pick that person. Maybe no one else could harness the joy the fire, the soul of Ariel. Could you imagine if Haley got done and the director was like this? Heart of your world. Done. Perfect. You were perfect. You were perfect for this role. Really? You liked it? You were made to be this role, except you're black. Yeah, you're not white. So we're gonna give it to Emma Watson. She can't sing, but she's got the best skin color for this role. Maybe go try the other Disney princesses. All one of them. I'm sure you'd look great as a frog. My opinion is the same as when those weird fat activists complained that a thin person was cast and wore a fat suit. And they're on TikTok saying, there's plenty of fat actors they could have played for that role. Well, did you ever think that maybe just maybe your fat actors were not good enough? 
Maybe the white actresses that auditioned weren't good enough. Same with the other people I listed off in the beginning. Maybe, just maybe, no one else could embody Genghis Khan other than a racist white guy who openly said he believes in white supremacy. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not there. I'm not the director. I'm not hiring these people. And neither are you. Directors are going to pick who they want, and he wanted Haley. All right. Let's get to the last chapter. Why the hell are grown ass people so attached to fictional characters? Like I mentioned previously, I love doing cosplay. I love taking a character and interpreting, interpreting it the way that I want, the way that I want, the way that fits me the most. My version of the character. Well, with that comes a lot of critique as anything you do on the internet or in the public eye. But from people who think that if you cosplay, you have to. Make sure the character is perfect. You've got to get every single detail, everything down to the skin color. With that, many black cosplayers face the critique that the character is in black. <laughs> I've gotten it many times as if they don't know that I don't know the character is black. I guess I must be that dumb. Just a dumb little black girl. I don't get it that much anymore, but I did a lot when I was little. Like I said, I always loved to dress up. From a young age, I was taught that you can't dress up like certain characters because you're black. For example, I was six, about six. I remember it like it was yesterday. My mom brought me to a princess themed birthday. I told you guys this a long time ago, somewhere in these videos, but she brought me to a princess themed birthday. I was the only black girl and the birthday girl stood up on her bed and was appointing each little girl a popular princess name. You get Cinderella because you're blonde. You're gonna be Snow White because you got black hair. And she literally zeroes in on me and says, you can't be a princess because you're black and there's no black princesses. And then they literally just went to go off and play and I kind of just sat there. It stuck with me forever, forever. Well now, bitch, I can't. I've got three to choose from. Oh yeah, I said three. Asha, she's got braids, so ha ha! And you bet your ass I remember who it was and I'm going to tell her. She's on social media. I could cancel her like right there. Just so you know, everyone, this social media person said that I couldn't be a Disney princess when we were six. She probably doesn't remember. And honestly, she was right. There was no black princesses back then. But like I said, a younger Michelle would be extremely happy to see a black little mermaid. So to anyone who says kids don't see color or this isn't important, it's, it's very important to a certain group of people. And I think it's amazing. I love it. I'm absolutely ecstatic that there is a black Ariel. Take that how you want. If it hurts your feelings, I don't care. But little girl Michelle is squealing. Anyway, back to cosplay. Many black cosplayers will get the comment, you can't play this character because they're white. Yes, we know. We've got about a whopping what eight to choose from thanks for telling us we're just trying to have fun it is called cosplay if you don't want to play then don't but whenever i would dress up when i was younger i thought i could only dress as the black characters that gave me susie gerald from hey arnold vince from recess uh the black girl from clueless steve urkel and the few black sitcoms that people weren't even going to know because i went to mostly white schools the black fucking half horse that cleaned the white chick's hooves in peter pan y'all they didn't even dress her so when social media blew up I remember being introduced to black cosplayers and my mind was blown because they weren't just cosplaying black characters. They were cosplaying everything. Isn't that weird though? But in the black community, we're told we can't dress up like white characters because they're white. And we will get those comments from our own people. Why you wanna be the white character? You trying to be white? There's a black character right there in the background. And why are you dressing up anyway? That's some white people nerd shit. Man, you gotta go outside. You gotta go play basketball. You gotta go run and be a track runner because you're black. And then you have all the white people saying, you can't play that character, they're white. <laughs> so it's everyone just telling you that you can't do something based on the color of your skin. And not even on the topic of being black in the cosplay community as a whole. If you don't get it perfect, people will tell you. People will take it to heart. People will have issues. But it is astonishing how angry people have gotten with me personally when I don't depict a character exactly. 
how it's written or if I dress up like a character in my videos and I don't act exactly how they act on screen. They can't wrap it around their thick skull that characters can change. Movies and characters can be based off of real events and places, but it doesn't have to be the exact storyline or look. Just like the original Little Mermaid dropped dead and turned into foam, and the 1989 Little Mermaid got married, and the 2023 Little Mermaid is black. Maybe the 2053 Little Mermaid will be Chinese, okay? I don't know, but it can happen because movies are all about imagination. And if you have enough money, you can create a whole movie the way that you want. If you do not want your Little Mermaid to change, they don't have to. Don't let it. The 1989 version is still whiter than ever and she even has the natural red hair that she loves so much. But now that that's all covered, let's answer the question, why the fuck are people so obsessed with their characters looking exactly how they want? Nostalgia. We all love it. Pretty much the only thing keeping us millennials alive at this point. But I've just come to the conclusion that people like to feel that sweet, sweet nostalgic feeling and they can't get it if their imaginary character doesn't look exactly how they did to them when they were five. All right, so let's wrap it up. We can review my opinion because I'm sure you guys will distort it, warp it, and twist it to hurt your own feelings about a cartoon. Fish. Yes, Disney did go woke. If your definition of woke is being more diverse, then sure. But I personally am enjoying the diversity of it. I don't think all of Disney's new movies are the best writing and jokes aren't exactly all that funny as they were when I was younger, but I personally am enjoying it. Will I enjoy a live action Disney movie? Hello, Pops. <laughs> Their track record of me enjoying the live action movies are not that great. And quite frankly, Ariel wasn't my favorite Disney princess. None of them really were, but but I did watch it from time to time. Honestly, Ursula was my favorite one. I thought she was amazing. But Ariel's was there. But I'm still very happy that a well-spoken, smart, gorgeous black woman is now Ariel. If y'all made the Black Panther white, I would probably laugh. Now, if you turn to Yana white, then we have a problem. <laughs> no, might be an interesting story. Poor white girl version, I guess. Whatever. Do whatever you want. If you have enough money, you can do whatever you want and make a movie. I personally, if it angers me that much, I don't have to go see it. Yes, I think when it comes to cosplay, white people can totally dress up like characters. I don't think you need to change your skin color, but people like to dress up like characters that they really like. If I can dress up like Ariel, someone white can dress up, in my opinion, like Tiana. Whenever I say that, a lot of black people get upset but I think it's fair and it's also a character. People can interpret it the way that they want. No, I do not think you are racist just because you are not excited about The Little Mermaid or if you think that The Little Mermaid should be of the original color and that Disney should make a another Little Mermaid. I don't think you're necessarily racist. I just find you very weird. And it's a kid movie. I am judging you quite a lot of it if you are an adult and then you vocalize that you don't like the movie solely because the mermaid is black to your very young children. That, I'm definitely judging you a lot of it on that. I feel like kids will process that as, oh, black bad and white good. And then your kids turn into very interesting adults. But also I have to mention there were plenty of black people that are not happy with it and want an original character and say that Ariel should have stayed white. If you go through some of the comment section and I went deep, there was quite a bit of black people saying, nope, she should have stayed white. Give us an original character. This is dumb. So I don't know what you guys would qualify that as, as a black person saying, nah, Ariel should have stayed white. Is that racist if they are black? I've had a few of my, like, I think two of my family members vocalize, like super vocal about Ariel being white. And I'm just like, y'all are odd. This is a weird, <laughs> weird internet fight, but okay weirdos. Is the new movie like the original Little Mermaid? No, but the original Little Mermaid that Disney made is also not like the original mermaid. Y'all, everything just can't say the same. Changing stories, I think, are fine, and it happens all the time, especially with Disney. Remember when we were kids, millennials, I'm talking to you, and Cinderella, the live action came out? Cinderella was black as hell, the prince was Asian, the dad was white, and the mom was Whoopi Goldberg. And we all watched it, and we loved it, but for some reason, we can't grasp that Ariel is black. Very, very odd, people. And yes, I do think if there was an original black character and they swapped them for a white person, oh, the black community would be pissed. They would be in shambles. They would crumble. They would be very, very angry. But like I showed you, 
that's been happening. All you can do is complain, and now we have the internet, so it makes it a lot easier for other people to hear yet. So to anyone on either side that is mad about white people swapping, black people swapping, and everything in between, I honestly don't know what to tell you. Not everyone is going to look how you want them to look in your favorite movie from your childhood or from a movie that you like. Sometimes your favorite character will be different. Sometimes it's not a movie directed at you. Sometimes you are not the target that they are trying to pander to. Don't watch it and create a movie that is up to par for your personal taste. Or enjoy the version that you like. And those are my opinions on people fighting over a fish humanoid. But now it's time for you to tell me what your opinions are in the comment section. Will you go watch the movie? Tell me your opinions. Not that I have to tell you to do that because I think a lot of you guys are probably writing me a lot of paragraphs, angry paragraphs, as you watched it. So thank you for that and thank you so much for being here and uh, internet warriors still fighting about this on your Facebook or in your comment section. I respect the fight <laughs> over a kid's movie. Bye, yo weirdos. I love you though. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all.